Good evening and welcome to Legal Talk, the talk show brought to you by the law offices of O'Donnell, Weiss and Matei. Your life, your business, your law firm. We're located at 41 High Street where, in Pottstown where we've been since 1955. We're all also located at 347 Bridge Street in Phoenixville where, where we've been located since January of uh, 2011, I think it has been. Time flies, maybe 2010. Uh, my name's David McGay, and I'm one of the attorneys at the office. And uh, tonight, well, tonight, I'm joined by Mary Foote, the executive director of Colonial Theater. Mary, thanks for joining me tonight. Good to see we you, appreciate Dave. It. Yeah, thanks thank for you. stopping by. And thank you for being a partner, so to speak, of, for, with O'Donnell Weiss and Matei Law Offices and vice, vice versa. Uh, folks, I'm really excited that we're, we're taping tonight's show. Uh, outside of the historic Colonial Theater in Phoenixville. And I, I personally, boring story folks, but I was born and raised right across the river in Montclair Oaks. And uh, Mary, I remember the very first movie that I can remember uh, was The Green Berets. And I think it came out in maybe 1966 or 67 folks. I remember watching it here as well as uh, I can think of many other E.T. and blah, blah, blah shows from the from, uh, I mean, E.T. was later than that, but I remember coming here as a kid, Mary, in the 60s, right. 70s, uh, and then and, and 80s. And I'm really proud that our, our office, uh, O'Donnell, Weiss, and Matei Law Offices, uh, has uh, 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 elected to be, hopefully, part of the, not only the present, Mary, of the Colonial Theater, but uh, also as well as the future. Right, right. Uh, but what I'd like to talk about, about folks today is the Colonial Theater, and a little bit of history, and then maybe in the second half of the show, uh, I'm going to be joined by one of our one of my partners, Jim Kovaleski, who's going to uh, talk with Mary. Mary, you're going to work with Jim on the second half of the show, folks, to talk about um, uh, uh, the present here at the Colonial Theater as well as the future shows, uh, fundraising needs, uh, uh, physical plant needs, Mary. So sure. I'm filling up your head hopefully with a lot of ideas <laughs> I, I want to hear from you uh, but again folks tonight we're opening the show on Bridge Street in Phoenixville very busy part of town very busy town and we're, we're taping right outside uh, under the marquee of the Colonial Theater what I'd like you to do folks is we're going to take a, a one second break we're going to cut here and we're going to go inside to talk about the history of uh, the Colonial Theater so don't go anywhere welcome back folks to legal talk brought to you by O'Donnell Weiss and Matei Law Offices. I know we only broke for a second, but I had to throw that back in there. Your life, your business, your law firm in Phoenixville and Pottstown. Uh, now, Mary and I here, where are we, Mary? Let's just orient our guests or our viewers. And by the way, uh, Mary, the viewers, I think we have a, probably a good mix of those who have spent their childhood at the Colonial Theater. Right. Those who are here now presently or come here now presently. And I think I'm afraid and that's the idea of the show, a lot of our, our viewers uh, either have never heard of the Colonial Theater or they have but never been. So orient, orient our viewers okay. as to where we are. Well, thank you, Dave. Sure. Right now we're inside the lobby of the 1903 Colonial Theater. It's a wonderfully historic building, was really taken care of on many levels for these 110 years by different groups over time. Did you say 1903? That's correct. So really, a that's a correct. And, uh, 113 uh, years 13, old. 114 yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. And there have yeah. been some changes, but basically the way you see it is how it was built in um, 1903. Harry Brownback, who was a upstanding citizen of Phoenixville, okay. decided that this this what was really a one horse town with with an unpaved bridge street, right. um, that that this town needed something. Uh, for the arts. Okay. And, and so thinking between Philadelphia and Reading, this was a wonderful midpoint for artists to stop by. So this all predates film. Mary Pickford came and was on the stage, Harry Houdini. So this gentleman was just really great at bringing live programs to the theater. That's so it was a, really the Colonial Opera House. Is that what it was called yes, back, back yes. in the day? And that's a really good point because Phoenixville was a one-horse town. It was a small sure. town, although the, although the steel industry was a burgeoning. It was burgeoning. Five thousand people around the time the 5, theater 000. was built. Okay, yes. I think Phoenixville yeah. might be fifteen thousand. Sixteen, seventeen. We're growing. Okay, sixteen <laughs> or seventeen thousand. But um, that's a good point about back then. Philadelphia was Philadelphia. Reading was that's a decent-sized right. town, but there really wasn't 
much right. in between. That's correct. And, and for someone, you say Harry Brownback? Yes. To have the uh, foresight to, to put in a, a, a cultural venue right. back in 1903 is, is something else. That's right. Okay. And people looked to the outside their homes for their entertainment, okay. of course, because there was no air conditioning. There were no DVDs. So everyone came right. downtown. This was their living room. Okay, and yeah. it predated moving pictures. That's correct. When did when moving pictures come around? Oh, well, you're testing my yeah, late roughly. 19s, um, or early 20s. So yeah, late teens. yeah. And if you know more about movies than me, folks, <laughs> you come you in can and let see me know. And, and talk <laughs> that's to her about right. It. Yeah, that's yeah. right. But um, so this lobby was really renovated in the 30s to mm. more mimic the movie theater uh, that were the movie theaters that were being built across the country. So it became a movie theater in, in the 30s, late 30s. 20s, early 30s. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we have a ticket count. We have a well, not a ticket counter, but a, a snack stand or whatever. The snack I think. stand was probably put in in the 70s, the 60s okay. or 70s. Are there early. a Reese's cups from 1938 <laughs> in there? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There, everything's fresh here. I'm kidding. It's a little bit empty right now, and we'll talk about that later okay. and, and some of the future yes. movement yeah. of the colonial yeah. theater. Yeah, I, hold that thought for a second. Sure. I do want folks to talk about, uh, in the second half of the show, I do want to talk, Mary, and I want you to start thinking about it now as we're chatting, about not only the uh, presently what's happening at the theater, but I want, I want our viewers to be aware of future events, future expansion, sure. future fundraising needs, et cetera. Sure, so, sure. okay, so in the 30s, it became more of a movie theater. Movie theater and really a bustling downtown. Anyone who worked at the steel site um, came downtown to do all their shopping, to do all their, their entertainment. Um, so Phoenixville, I mean, the Colonial Theater was really at the hub of that energy. Okay. Um, up until really the, the late 50s, early 60s, when, of course, like a lot of small towns, industry was starting to wane right. and, and a big King of Prussia mall brought some of uh, some po competition that competition we hadn't had in before. The form, in the form of bigger movie theaters. Multiplexes, that's uh, right. They right. started three and then six, now they're 24 screens, just giving people right. more, more, um, more things to choose from. So our one screen house, 658 seats, which is beautiful and again was built as a vaudeville house. So the acoustics are wonderful. The sight lines are great, right. and there's a wonderful stage. So um, we've been doing some wonderful programming in this space for the and last And what Matt is showing years. now, Mary, is, is the theater that, and almost like it looked in the 30s. Exactly like it looked. Oh, it's exactly like yeah. it looked in the we 30s. We did replace the seats because those old seats just became too uncomfortable, but right. we picked seats that looked historic, we thought. And um, it is a little dark in there right now because sure. The chandelier that would light up the whole room um, was sold at some point in the progression of sales okay. of this building. So we'll be doing a major rehab of this space in a couple years down the road. Well, I think it's an interesting point is, is, is the, the theater started off as an opera vaudeville right. uh, house or venue. Right. So the, 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 the sound has to be much better than, say, if it would have started off as a movie theater. Absolutely. Is that right? And I'm it's nothing absolute. about movie theaters. And there's a little bit. I love to go to them, but mm -hmm. that sounds right. And there's a little bit of a balancing act, but yes, we have concerts in here and get five, six hundred people, and the acoustics are wonderful. But at the same time, we are able to show film, um, okay. and, and get the sound that you need for film. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a great space. Right. It's well, a multi-use space. Take take us up to well, you you kind of in your in your chronology had us up to the 60s or 70s. But before we talk about what happened to the theater in mm -hmm. the 70s, uh, can you give us can you give us some examples of some of the more famous acts that were here from the origination? You mentioned Mary Pickford. You mentioned Houdini. Harry Houdini, Thurston. Uh, quite frankly, uh, there was a lot of history lost, so we don't have a lot of, of okay. the details that other theaters may have about what's going on. Right. So, um, but but the transition to to the movie theaters happened fairly quickly when you think about 1903 to to ah. the late 20s. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. folks, that takes us to the 60s or 70s. Um, I hate to even talk about this because it was not a, it's kind of like a wet blanket, but it's an no, elephant, elephant it's, in the room. Let's talk about well, what happened in the 60s and 70s with the, uh, with the theater. Well, the theater certainly was still here, and um, 
unfortunately, in many cities, they were torn down. In the ah, famous right. 70s, redevelopment ideas was uh -huh. to tear down historic buildings. We were lucky, actually. It's a good story. In the mid-70s, two gentlemen who had a pipe organ needed a home for their pipe organ. And some of your, your watchers may have come here in the 70s and 80s for pipe organ concerts sure. because they would bring busloads of people in. To, and there was a beautiful pipe organ that would come up from under the stage. Oh, really? So because they had the pipe organ and they needed the big space, they didn't twin the theater, which is like putting a wall down the middle and having two screens, Good. like so many historic theaters did in the 70s wow, and 80s. Wow, that would have been a shame. So it really saved for us an opportunity to bring back live programming to the Colonial. Okay, and here we are taping the show in the summer of 2017. Right. Uh, tell the viewers a little bit about the organizational structure for the sure. Colonial Theater. You're not the you're you're the executive director. That's correct. How long have you been associated with the theater? Well, I got involved with a small group of friends around two, um, 1996. 96. <laughs> a long time ago, the building was going up for sale, okay. and we had a concern. Mm -hmm. We had a concern that that could be the end of the Colonial Theater okay. if at some point the community didn't say this is ours, this is an important asset, and uh -huh. we want it. I have a community organizing background, so I had some thoughts about how this building as an asset could contribute to the economic revitalization of the downtown. So we put together a group called the Association for the Colonial Theater. We purchased the theater with the help of um, PEDCO, which is the Economic Development Corporation here in town. And we okay. now own, we then, th for, after a little bit of a pass through, we owned it. As a nonprofit, as a nonprofit, we raised a half a million dollars as a brand new organization, and we got the building up to code, oh. and really only on this level. So over the years, then we raised another two million dollars to to do further renovations. Okay, bringing it up to code allowed you to have public events. That's correct. Bring okay. people back in. We really improved the projection equipment so that we can show film high quality film because right now we what we committed to is doing art and independent film initially initially and okay. classic film okay all right and that brings us up to about well when did when did the reconstruction start roughly we started construction around 1997 98 and then okay. we opened in 1999 99 but we're taping the show in the summer of 17 and i'm teasing the second half of the okay. show okay with yes. jim kovaleski but we had you you underwent um, is, that is that right, English? You underwent, undergone, underwent. A huge underwent, transformation. A huge transformation. Yes. When did that start? Well, the thinking around it started in 2008. Oh, okay. The, the purchase of um, the building next to us, and we'll talk about that yeah. later, um, was in 2011, and now we are operating a three-screen house. Okay. Well, you, you you stepped on my line here for next next show, but that's already so, next. Sorry, Dave. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, folks. Um, I, what I'd like you to do, please, viewers, is um, I, I don't go away. Just stand by. Your, stay by your TV. You're watching Legal Talk, brought to you by the law offices of O'Donnell, Weiss, and Mate. Your life, your business, your law firm in the Pottstown and Phoenixville areas. Tonight I'm joined by Mary Foote, Executive Director of the Colonial Theater. In the second half of the show, Mary and Jim are gonna talk about the construction, what's going on now with the Colonial Theater, and, and what the Colonial Theater needs from all of us That's right. uh, moving, moving for, for, uh, into, into the future. So folks, Thanks. you're watching Legal Talk. Please stay tuned. For over 50 years now, O'Donnell, Weiss, and Mate have helped their clients resolve a wide variety of legal challenges. OWM Law provides legal representation to clients throughout southeastern Pennsylvania. The attorneys and highly trained support staff utilize the latest technology and resources available to satisfy the needs of their clients. O'Donnell, Weiss, and Mate, delivering the highest level of professional service. Good evening and welcome back to Legal Talk, the talk show brought to you by the law firm of O'Donnell Weiss Pate. I'm Jim Kovaleski, I'm one of the attorneys there. Uh, Dave McGay, one of my partners, had the earlier part of the show. I'm going to handle the second part and again I'm joined by Mary Foote, the executive director for the Colonial Theater here in Phoenixville. And what we're standing in now, Mary, is, is <clears throat> what from my perspective as, as someone that comes to the Colonial and has walked by it, go for lunch or whatever every day in town, 
is really one of the major, major projects and major improvements in the borough, particularly right here on Bridge Street. It's this acquisition that you guys did of this, the bank building that was, well, it was originally a bank building, then it housed the uh, Daily Republican, I think, back in the day, uh, up to the, uh, the Phoenix, uh, the, uh, the, the later newspaper, and I, the name escapes me. Can you help me out with that? The Evening Phoenix? The Evening Phoenix. Yes. <laughs> I'm not from Phoenix at all. I, I married into Phoenix, but my wife is born and raised here, so my in-laws are probably going to be very upset with the fact that I couldn't remember that newspaper. <laughs> but... To get back to the main point, so here we are standing in what used to be a bank building, what used to be a, a, a newspaper building, and now it's really an even better use, the best use ever. It's an expansion of the, the Colonial. It's, it's something that is just wonderful for the residents and for the surrounding residents of the Phoenixville area. So Mary, why don't you tell me a little bit? We, we teased, in the more, teased it in the first half of the show. You purchased it in 2011. Sure. Uh, and then, then what happened from there? Well, just to take a little skip back, okay. in 2008 we realized we had so many members and so many donors who would come here and enjoy the shows, and we were just juggling one screen house. And one screen houses are hard economically, but also programmatically. So we were looking in, back in 2008 and how to add more programming and more patron amenities. By 2011, the newspaper had gone into bankruptcy, and this is like a miracle for small nonprofit theaters that thrive in their first 10 years. And then a building next door just becomes available at a price that's right after a town has already begun to turn around. So we grabbed that opportunity thanks to our board of directors who are just so amazing and purchased the building and then set to do the planning on how, how to make this magnificent space part of the Colonial Theater. So I think when you go inside here, you'll see that it really almost fits and people feel right away that it's, these two buildings belong together. Having been to the Colonial, you don't even realize, you walk through this threshold where there used to be a wall. That's right. And you don't even realize it's a separate building. It seems like it was always part of it. So it's, it's wonderful from that nature. And, and that's coming from someone who saw it, I was fortunate enough with Mary showing some tours of what it looked like before. And it was just, uh, yeah. it was, uh, I think the, the, the technical term is it was a junky building at that point. Right, right. Because there was a lot of stuff in here, a lot of work that needed to be done, a lot of uh, repairs that needed to be made. But they have done such a wonderful job while improving it, but still holding some of the stuff that was here, like the molding, the original molding, the ceiling. The, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And this building was a bank building, so the wall we had to d pass through was about two feet thick. Oh I mean, they God. were serious about building banks back in 1925. They wanted them to be graceful and convey this sense that your money was safe here. So you look up at the ceiling, and that is the ceiling that the bank built with the beautiful glass. And um, we weren't able to save the floor. It was a tile granite floor, but um, we found something that we thought made it look, you know, conveys the feeling that was there in 1925. Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, this, you, you walk in here and this floor looks like it's, a, it's from a building from some of the other theaters that I've been in or some of the historic bank buildings that you've been in. It just really makes the room look awesome. So with this expansion, you didn't just add theaters, you added other amenities that you were able to to provide to the patrons that come, correct? That's great. Yeah, that's correct. This lobby, first of all, can handle more people. When we have a concert in the Colonial, that lobby could only handle 75 people. Now we've got a beautiful lobby that can handle 250, 300 people. We added restrooms, which is always a, an important thing in this <laughs> day and age. And also up above us, uh, uh, a room for rental for parties and a roof deck. So we've got a lot of nice amenities for people. And the roof deck, you actually have an event coming up, I think I saw. July 4th, we have our, we're kicking off the room and, you know, just as of the first event, because right out on the deck, you'll be looking over on the north side, which is where the fireworks occur in Phoenixville. So we're pretty excited. We've asked people to bring their lawn chairs and sit out on the deck and watch the July 4th events. That sounds, that sounds awesome. I, I have to keep that in mind for the next time that's the firm right. has a party. That's right. That might be the, the perfect, because you, not only do you get the, everything that's inside the Colonial, but you get to, to see the views of the north side yeah. and, and of Phoenixville downtown, which is just absolutely amazing. And you talked, Jim, about the fact that this was a great asset for Phoenixville, and we believe that, but we see this as a regional space. Our campaign team came from all over the county and helped us to raise the money. We are still raising money for the campaign and invite all gifts. And we are so appreciative of the law firm OWM and them 
participating in our campaign. It was, your generous gift was really wonderful. Uh, it was, it was our, our pleasure to be part of that, and it really is. This is something from, I'll take my, my law hat off and put the fact that I'm on borough council here, put that hat on. It's something that the entire borough has been able to get behind because it's such a wonderful asset. It's, it's something that it, it attracts families. I know I've brought my family here to many events that have been sponsored by uh, various donors and, and su uh, sure. supporters of the, of, the, of the Colonial, and yep. it's just a wonderful place to go. I've seen um, the comedy shows that you have hosted here, so that's probably less of a family event, but right. still an <laughs> awesome, awesome experience. And we're gearing up for Blobfest, which is just in a couple weeks. And because of this new space, we, just like the Blob, we are growing in, in our programming for Blobfest. So we're pretty excited about some really new and exciting um, things that we're offering for Blobfest this year. Awesome. So you'll still be running out from We'll the... be running out. Yes, the iconic run out in yeah. front of the Colonial Theater will still be happening. Any interest in that? Make sure you check in early because I know those tickets sell out very quickly. What's the theme for this year's Blobfest? Oh, I'm putting you on the spot. I know. Yeah, and it's really esoteric. Oh, so it, okay. it's like Blobberama or something. And I just remember. <laughs> sorry, my Blobfest committee will be very upset that I didn't remember that. I, I know that um, my wife's cousin has participated and has done the decoration and dressed up, and yeah. you can really go all out and have a great time. It's a great community event. It but, is. Oh, yeah, it, it absolutely is. So why don't we uh, check out for, for a minute, and then we can go down to see one of the new theaters that you've installed. Great. And you can tell us a little bit about that. With this new theater, right, were you able to change, with the new two new theaters, were you able to change your programming as far as the movies you show, or is that going to stay the same? Well, what happens is now we can get movies sooner and keep them a little longer. When you only have one screen and you're working with a um, film distributor, they, they will only let you have a film after it's been around in the other theaters for a while. We want to position ourselves as what's called a first-run theater, okay. meaning within th three to six months we expect to be showing films when they open in Philadelphia. Wow. Toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We will continue to lean more toward the art and independent film and foreign film because we feel like that's a market that isn't served out here with the, our competing, the, the larger theaters. Sure. But... Um, but we also do a lot of great kids programs and classic films. So I think we have a programming schedule that has something for everyone. It really is amazing what you can do in the, in the space that, that you had before. And I, I'm so excited to see what's coming down the road in these new spaces. It's just it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, so we talked a little bit about your fundraising efforts. Let's get back into that because you have, I think there's a dedicated website, Bank on the Arts. It's bankonthearts.org, and it's on our own website, so thecolonialtheater.com. Okay. You can go there or just Google bankonthearts.org and you can see who's given. You can ha see the great pictures that are the testimonials and really the effort that we've been going through for three years um, to, to raise the money necessary to open this place. It really is amazing. Uh, I've seen the numbers, I've uh, seen some of the numbers of the, the, the money that you've been able to raise over the years for this, and that just really speaks to how much people get behind and, w and want right. to support you. Yeah. So if you, uh, I'll, I'll make the one, more, one last plea. If you haven't checked out The Colonial, make sure you, you do. Come down, see a show, see, a, see a, uh, uh, the comedy. It was hilarious. Come see <laughs> uh, a movie. It, it's, it's wonderful. Bring your kids down because there is plenty of stuff for the kids as well. Uh, and also ch make sure you check out the fundraising page for the Bank on the Arts because it is a wonderful program. So this is Theater 2. It's 173 seats. We also have a very intimate 63-seat theater down in the lower level. And that was the beauty of this building. That it, the, there's just so much space underneath that we were able to use to create a couple of spaces for entertainment. No longer a dirt floor because I remember there was a part of the building that had That's a dirt right. floor. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's amazing that you were able to... That, uh, they, they were able to work within the confines of this building and, and really just make it so much nicer than it was. It, 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 I don't know how the architect and the, and the builders did it, but they did a wonderful job. And it, this camera, I'm sure, is not doing it justice, so make sure you come down and check it out in person. And we could take a walk downstairs if you want to see the smaller theater. I think that would be great, and then we can wrap up. So we're coming back. We're now downstairs in, in the third and final uh, studio or theater that they have at the Colonial. 
uh, Mary was talking a little bit about it. It's the more intimate one. I'll let her further describe what we have down here. Sure. Um, this space is really interesting and has some history because there was a separate door to, from the outside to come into this space. We since abandoned that, but the history of this room is that the USO had a little coffee house down here, I think around the 40s, and oh, wow. then in the 70s there was um, another more hippie coffee house here for a little while. When we bought the building, the Colonial Theater, there was a theater in here, um, a gaslight theater or something, and then the last group that was in here was a, a dojo. So this room was used for many different things. We've put a lot of work into creating a stadium seating setup with a stage and a screen, but um, it, it, was, it sat 18 inches below the basement, so it gave us that ability to create this um, mini stadium feel. We think it's an intimate room. People love coming here and watching a movie. Typically, the movie's been here a few weeks already before it ends up in this room because our te your attendance tends to drop over a few weeks, so it, this 63 seat works perfectly for that. This is just a wonderful little gem that you were able to build down here and, and take advantage of that space. I was, in, I was in the space when it was a dojo or shortly after you acquired right. it, and I remember what it looked like, and to see it now, it's just completely amazing. Yeah. Well. I appreciate everyone turning, tuning in tonight to talk to listen to the Colonial Theater. I thank Mary very, very much for thank you for so showing much. Us around. It was great uh, having you here. It was our pleasure. It was our pleasure to participate. So check out the Colonial. Check out the Bank on the Arts uh, website. And I'll sign off. This is Legal Talk, brought to you by the law firm of O'Donnell Weiss Matei, with offices in Pottstown and in Phoenixville.